In this movie, I want to walk you through the process of adding doors and windows to your model. So I've got a completed wall layout here for the two-bedroom condominium unit that we've been working on in the last few movies. And if we want to add doors or windows, we can go over to the Architecture tab and locate those two buttons right here. Now we're going to start with the doors. The shortcut is DR if you prefer to use the shortcuts. And I've preloaded a few door families into this file already. If I open up the Type Selector, you can see that I have a door interior single flush and a bifold two panel door and then this default single flush door was already in here. Now I'm going to show you how I preloaded these door families a little bit later, but for now I'm going to use the door interior single flush wood panel and I'm going to select the largest size, the 36 by 84 size. Now I'm going to use this for the entrance to the condominium unit. Now notice that if my cursor is in empty space, that I get the small little circle with a line through it indicating that I can't currently place the door. So in order to place a door, you have to actually highlight an existing wall and then the door will appear. Now the entrance to the condo is this small little angled wall right here. And the other thing that you'll notice is when you highlight a wall, some temporary dimensions will appear and Revit will do its best to give you logical placement options. So in this case, it's centering it quite nicely within that small little space there. Now. It's pointing outside the space right now. If you'd rather have it pointing inside the space, just move your mouse slightly to the other side of the wall and that will flip the door around. And then when you're ready to place it, you just simply click and the door will appear. Now, in several of the previous movies, we've talked about temporary dimensions. Temporary dimensions are these small dimensions that appear here after the door is placed. Well, notice that I can click and activate that dimension in the same way that I was able to do with manipulating walls and change the value and that will move the door slightly and snug it over into that corner. So the temporary dimension editing techniques are not limited to just walls. We can use them for any geometry in Revit. So let's come over here to the type selector and choose a different size. I'm going to choose the 34 by 84 this time. And let's add a few more doors in the space itself. So here in this bedroom, maybe I want to place a door right there and accept the default centered location. And then I'll come over here in this room and I like that it's centered side to side, but notice that even though I'm flipping into the room, it's pointing the wrong way. So it would make it a little difficult to get into this space. Well, if you look down at your status bar, it actually says the space bar will flip the instance left and right. So if you just tap your space bar, that will change the direction of the door and then you can click to place it. So it's really easy to kind of get that door positioned where it needs to go. I'll place this one over here, tap the space bar, fine tune the position with the temporary dimension, place this one over here, fine tune the position with the temporary dimension, and then finally this one right here, it's already where I want it to go. So that's all my single flush doors. So now I'm gonna come over to the type selector one more time and choose the bifold 30 by 80, and I'll place one here, place one here, and place one here. Now I placed those kind of quick and I didn't really pay too much attention to the orientation, and I did that on purpose because I wanna show you how you can manipulate them later. So I'm going to go to the zoom options over here and choose zoom in region. ZR is the shortcut for that. And zoom in on this area right here. And this bifold door is swinging into the closet. But if you select it, you'll notice that it's got these two small flip grips right here and right here. So you can use these to flip it left and right, and you can use them to flip it in or out of the space. You can also tap your space bar and go through four possible flip options as well. So whichever method you prefer to use, you can reorient and reposition those doors after the fact. Now I'm just doing the wheel to zoom back out and then I'll just fine tune placement of some of these doors as well. So maybe move this one over to one foot six and this one's already at six inches, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut ZF to zoom to fit to get back out to see the entire layout and I want a double door here, which is gonna go out to a patio, and I want a double sliding door right here for this closet. Now, I don't have either of those door families currently loaded in this file, so in order to load them, what we do is we go back to the door command, DR, and over here on the ribbon, you'll have a load family button. Now, when you click that, it will display a dialog, which will take you out to your hard drive, and it should go to a folder that already has several subfolders containing different types of families that you can load. So here I have a doors folder. And within that folder, there are some doors in the root that are loose in that folder. And then there's also some subfolders. So I'm going to go into the residential folder next. And I want this double glass, full glass wood clad door here at the top. And I also want this interior double sliding two panels. So I'm going to hold the control key down 
and click that second door. Notice they both remain highlighted, and then I'll click open right here. Now, when I do that, both of these doors have lots of types. So sometimes when you load a family, it has lots of choices. So if I scroll through this list here, you can see that there's as many as maybe 10 types in the list. I don't want to load all 10 types because I don't need all of those sizes. So I'm going to select the first one. And then maybe I just want these last three sizes here. So I'm going to click, hold down, and drag through the last three sizes. Then I'm going to select the second door family that I'm loading, scroll down, and drag through the last three sizes there as well. And when I click OK, it will load those two families, but it will only load the three types that I asked for. So if I come over here to the type selector, you'll see there's the glass door that I loaded with its three sizes. And here is the sliding door that I loaded with its three sizes. So that's the advantage of using that specify types dialog is it allows you to load just the types that you need. So I'm going to choose the largest size double glass door here and drag my wheel just to pan the view slightly, get that centered in that space right there and click to place it. And then I'll switch to the double sliding closet door. And I'm going to choose this middle size right here and get that centered in this closet and click to place it. Click my Modify tool to cancel out of the command, and then type ZF to zoom to fit. So if you know how to place doors, then you know how to place windows, because the two commands are virtually the same. So the window command is right here. WN is the shortcut. And in this case, the only window that I have loaded is the fixed window, which is probably not appropriate for this condominium unit. Therefore, I'm going to go right to Load Family, just like we did with the doors, scroll down, locate the Windows folder, and then from the list here, I can choose which window family or families that I want to load. Now, in this case, I'm just going to simply use a casement double with trim. There's the preview of it right there. I'll click open. And you'll see, once again, we get the small circle with the line through it, indicating that we can't just place a window freestanding. In other words, it has to be hosted to a wall. And this time, it didn't display a specified types dialog. The casement window only has three sizes to begin with. So if it only has a couple sizes, usually they don't use the specified types. The specified types is called a type catalog. So usually they don't use the type catalog. They'll just load all of the types that are available. So that's what we have in this situation. We have all three types. And I'll just accept the default one there, the middle size. Place one here in this bedroom. Place one here in this bedroom. And place one over here in this kitchen. So the process of adding doors and windows is quite simple. They do require a wall host. So before you can click to place your door or window, you have to make sure that your cursor is on top of an appropriate host wall. But then you can place the doors and windows anywhere you like, use temporary dimensions to manipulate their positions. And if you need a door or window family or type that's not available in your current type selector list, you simply use the load family button to go out and browse to your hard drive and load in a different one.